Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today we're going to be revisiting a band that I haven't actually looked at since the very early days of this channel and it's a band called Eagle. Now I've covered uh, two tracks by them before. Um, there's a track called Eird or Eird, I'm not sure how it's pronounced and another one called Opus Brain I think it was and like I said these were back in the early days of this channel and they were a very interesting band you know they mixed all sorts of musical genres from black metal to trance techno and hip hop sort of styles I mean, they they covered every spectrum of the music um world <clears throat> so um they were they were a very interesting and strange band and their videos were somewhat bizarre now four days ago i think it was maybe more, they released a new track uh, called Very Noise. And just by the thumbnail of the video alone, it looks truly bizarre. So I thought I'm going to have to have a look at this. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at Very Noise by Eagle. Now, <clears throat> for the most part, they don't have lyrics. And what lyrics they do have are in a made up language. So there's not really any translation for the lyrics either. Um, and with this track, there are no lyrics, as far as I'm aware. I believe it's a purely instrumental piece of music. Um, so this could be very, very interesting. This could also be quite disturbing, if the thumbnail is anything to go by. Uh, it's quite a short track. It's just over two and a half minutes, I believe. So um, we'll jump in and have a look and see what, see what we've got, shall we? So um, very nice. By Eagle, let's have a look. What the f did I just watch? Uh, that was that was possibly the most bizarre, weird, and f 
up to you. I have seen it in a very, very long time. I mean, what the bloody hell? Um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what to say about that. That's just so, so weird. I mean, musically, it was actually less of what I've heard from them before, because most of the other tracks I've heard of them before have been more on their heavier side of music, like there was just briefly at the very end there, where that guy on the motorcycle was skimming across the top of the water. You know, most of what I've heard from them before has been along that sort of line, more of the black metal sort of um, death metal sort of style of music. But this one was more of the dancey sort of... It actually kind of reminded me a bit of Aphex Twin. Um... But that that vi that video in its own way kind of actually reminded me of those um, those short, short sort of weird animated sketches you see that include uh, like the Team Fortress characters or Shrek and you know those sorts of things. You know, there's loads of those little um, animations floating around. The video kind of reminded me of that, but on a way weirder level. I mean, what was that chunk of dancing meat stuff? Um, you know, it was, I'm really not quite sure what to say about that. It was just so utterly, utterly bizarre. They're right about the title though, very noise. I mean, it was, that, that sort of music I can't really get too into. I mean, I like Aphex Twin, you know, there's the occasional bit of it that I do like, but that's not the sort of music that I really sort of listen to but that was that was truly weird that was truly bizarre i'd love to know what the actual thought process behind that was and what the you know what inspired them to make that music with that video you know it's just so utterly utterly bizarre that is that is just strange um i can't really delve into anything that the song might mean or anything because You'd have to be some sort of weird, twisted genius to figure that out, I think. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. That was just... That was just strange. I mean, there was a guy wearing like, an airplane costume, like, walking funny and pelvic thrusting. And was a guy opening a boxing ring to find a dancing chunk of meat floating around. There was this giant, gloopy flesh monster destroying... That I said, what the bloody hell was going on? I, want... I don't. I I can't find any words. I don't know what to say about it. It was just so utterly bizarre. So um, I think for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to leave that where it is because I can't really say anything much about it, other than you know the music reminded me of Apex Twin, and the video reminded me of those Team Fortress weird videos that you've seen floating around YouTube. It was um. Interesting to say the least. It was quite an experience, but um, I'm not sure it's something I'm likely to repeat. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to leave that as it is. I think. Um, if anybody would like to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so by all means. You can drop a comment in the comment section below, or message me through my Facebook or my Instagram, or you can even message me through my Patreon, where you could also help to support this channel and help me create future content would be very useful for me indeed. Um, there is also an option in there where you can get your suggestion jumped to the front of the queue. There are limitations to that um, at the moment. Um, to be fair to people who suggest track through uh, regular means like Facebook, um, YouTube comments and my Instagram. Um, because otherwise, you know, people would lock, you know, people could easily abuse it and people on those platforms wouldn't be able to get their suggestions looked at. Um, if you are suggesting a track through a regular means, do know it might take me a while to get around to it, um, since I get suggested so many new tracks every single day that my list grows faster than I can record the videos. Um, but I do write down every suggestion I get, so it'll get done eventually. It's just going to take me a while to get around to it. And also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, a British-based charity whose main goal is to put an end to hate crimes, mainly those involving people of the alternative 
culture people who listen to alternative music or wear alternative fashion. And it's something that I believe in very, very strongly, something I'm very, very passionate about, because it's something that I've had experience in my life. And it's something that goes largely unspoken about and something needs to be done to fix this. Because every day around the world, people are getting violently attacked, brutally attacked, just because of their taste in music. And you know, the, these people are getting really, really injured. You know, people are getting hospitalized. People are having bones broken. Some are even getting like invasive injuries, like being uh, wounded with weapons of varying kinds. And no one ever talks about the fact that this is happening. And that needs to change. You know, every day we hear about all these other hate crimes like uh, sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, etc. And. You know, we hear every point of the spectrum of this, from the most heinous, violent crimes that can lead to someone's death, to the smallest and simplest of these crimes, which can lead, which can be just someone shouting a racist slur at someone or calling the police because someone they don't like is having a picnic in a public area. You know, we hear every aspect of these crimes, but we hear nothing about the fact that people of the alternative community are getting violently attacked every single day and the last time there was any widespread media coverage of, coverage of this was 12 years ago when Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend Rob Maltby were violently attacked by a group of five or six people and they were so severely uh, beaten that they both ended up in comas you know they were punched they were kicked they had their heads stamped on purely because of their taste in music, just because they listened to alternative music, just because they were wearing alternative fashion, you know. And Rob Maltby, he thankfully survived. He came out of a coma after about a week or so, I can't remember exactly how long. But Sophie Lancaster was in a coma for 13 days before she succumbed to her injuries and died. This young woman, she was about 20 at the time, was murdered because of her taste in music. And that's unacceptable, you know. It, you know, why would you kill someone because they like different music? You don't attack someone because they like different movies or TV shows. Why is music a trigger point? It makes no sense. But all this happened 12 years ago. And we've not really heard anything about something similar happening since. But I can guarantee you, in those 12 years, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people in the alternative community have been attacked violently in a similar fashion and it's never been spoken about because it's not ended in tragedy. It shouldn't take the death of someone for this to be spoken about, for something to be done about it. And with this not getting spoken about, with this not being brought forward and, you know, brought to the public's attention, the people who are perpetrating these crimes are getting away with it. They're essentially committing these crimes and getting away with it. And that needs to change you know we can't allow people to go around thinking they can violently attack people of the alternative community without there being consequences without there being ramifications for their action you know they've got to be punished accordingly but because no one's talking about this nothing's getting done and that needs to change and this is what the Sophie Lancaster Foundation is all about they want to bring more attention to the fact this is happening they want more people to talk about it we can't allow what happened to Sophie Lancaster and Rob Maltby happen again it should never have happened in the first place you know and Sophie Lancaster wants to make sure that that happens they don't want to see another family go through what they went through when they had to watch their daughter die over the course of 13 days you know, I, I think it's something very important and we need to start talking about it. Um, so if you would like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. You can go over there, find out what they're working on at the moment, uh, find out what their goal is because they can explain it so much better than I can. Uh, and if you can help them out in any way, uh, you know, obviously don't feel obligated to do so, but if you can help in any way, you know, even if it's a small donation through their website or something like one of these Sophie wristbands, if you can help in any small way, the smallest amount can make the biggest difference. And the sooner we get more people talking about this, the sooner we can help to stamp out prejudice, hatred and intolerance everywhere. But I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. Thank you all very, very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.